Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm excited to have, we have Lawton Childs who's one of the top copywriters and direct response marketers. He has written sales copy for very successful campaigns for top marketers such as Frank Kern, Ryan Dice, and many more. Lawton, thanks for joining me. Thank you very much, Jeremy, for having me. I appreciate it, man. I'm I'm excited, and you know, on the first when I emailed first, I um, asked who's on your bucket list to meet, and who, and you wrote back something interesting, which I want to talk about. You wrote, you wrote, I've gotten to work with a lot of my heroes already, and so I wanted to he- talk about who are some of your heroes, and then what were some of the stuff that you end up working on with them. Uh, you know, I started writing what we call direct response copy. Uh, or you know the art of salesmanship in print and video now now it's not just print right uh, about 12 years ago um, I started selling on eBay and then uh, I was like well the more persuasive this is the more stuff you sell uh, and so then I started to write for local clients uh, my parents had a hotel uh, so I wrote all the copy for the hotel um, and then I sold like boat slips and marinas so I started to get into this whole direct response thing. I got like Dan Kennedy's newsletter and I was like, oh, this is awesome. You know, like I I was like a, literally like a kid in a candy, candy store. And to many respects, I still am. I, I love I love learning about uh, this type of stuff, persuasion and um, formulas and that kind of thing. Um, so I quickly got into the direct response world and found out about people like Mike Koenig's um, Ryan Dice and Perry Belcher, uh, and Perry has just the best hooks and angles. I mean, just the way he starts off the letter, like if I gave you ten dollars and you gave me a dollar, uh, how often every day would you do that? And it's like all day, right? And so it's like this is what that's about. And so little things like that. Where and I just told him last time at Traffic and Conversion, I was like you're the reason that I work with you guys, you know, that you're one of my clients is the level of respect that I have for what they do and, and, and the level that they do it. Uh, so then I started to work with people like Sean Malarkey, uh, people that were in the industry that were just releasing a lot of products. This was around the time social media was getting big. Mm-hmm. So everyone had like a Facebook product or a Twitter product. Right. So I worked on some of the things like that. Um, Brian Moran, uh, did a lot of stuff for his recent launch. Um, gosh, uh, James Wedmore, um, Frank Kern. I got to, I think I was on a webinar with Frank and somehow we just became friends and we, he took my calls and we make fun of each other. And so, but now like we're, we're good friends and he needed some help with it. One of his wives, uh, Natalia, she's like a fitness model. And I did some copy for them for her. Uh, I think it was like a product that she had, and nice. uh, and helped them out on different some different stuff. So, but being able to approach those type of people, whether it's like Amish Shaw or Vaughn mm-hmm. uh, Halbert or uh, you know Jordan Belfort, uh, these different people mm-hmm. that are industry leaders in their field, and saying like, "Hey, this is what I do. Do you need some help?" And mm-hmm. nine times out of ten. No one is asking them those type of things, and so they're they're like, okay, sure, and I'm like, really? So it's like no credentials, no JVs, no big list, no million dollar launch under my name, but people take my call, and I've yeah. gotten to be some good friends with certain people, and so that's sort of how I got into it, and and who some of my heroes were, and um, and definitely people like Clayton Makepeace, John Carlton. Uh, you know, I formatted John Carlton's book on Kindle. Uh, so like I paid him money to be his student and then he paid me money to help him and so right. just things that that I feel like God really opened some doors and I was fortunate enough to walk through those doors. Mm-hmm. And um, so yeah, so that's kind of my background. I want to talk about some of those. You're for some reason the video keeps I don't know if you see it on your end it keeps um kind of every few is it doing something weird? Yeah, it's doing something weird where it's uh it's kind of getting oh. staticky, and then it goes clear again. All right, we're back. Uh, switch cameras for a second there. But so, Lawton, I want to ask you about. So you wrote, you just would email them and say, "All right, you know, a lot of people want to work with their heroes. 
What did you, I mean, obviously you're a copywriter. So what did you write to them that made them respond? I mean, I think at this, at that point, uh, I'd had some local experience, um, mm -hmm. you know, with, with some different things. So I kind of knew that I liked writing. I kind of knew that I liked mm -hmm. doing a, hopefully a, uh, an excellent job persuading people to take an action that my clients wanted them to take, mm -hmm. uh, in print or in video. At that point, no one was doing video. This was like 2005, maybe 2004. Um, but I, I would write, I think I wrote Perry Belcher and said, hey, you know, I really admire what you guys are doing and this is who I am and, you know, uh, I'd love to maybe write for you guys. And so, uh, and that's sort of the same thing uh, that I talked to like Mike Canning's when he was starting Traffic and uh, Traffic. Oh gosh, what was that? Traffic, traffic geyser, traffic geyser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I interviewed him, uh, and then uh, I just basically said, "Hey, this is what I do." Blah blah blah. Do you would you need some help, or would you you know uh, how are you doing? You might have everything you need, but if not, this is what I do. I'd love to to help you guys out. And I approach people that I respected. I approach people that were doing big things in the industry mm -hmm. uh, and releasing a lot of different products that I knew had significant volume. Mm -hmm. uh, but might not have had someone at that level to help them. Um, mm -hmm. So I was able to get people, uh, Amish Shaw, uh, Trey Smith. Um, I did like all the video game type sales letters that they had at the time, mm -hmm. uh, like how to start an app business and things like that. Um, and so some of it just became of like word of mouth. Like people, so I worked with so and so, and they would say, "Oh, they like what you did," or "You're right. a good writer," or "I need your help." And so. That stuff started, and uh, and I worked or advised most of those guys that were at the top of the you know kind of internet marketing industry, mm -hmm. uh, and then the like lower like B level or C level or even like D level. I mean, I've worked with a lot of those different guys, um, mostly in like the business opportunity space, not so much in finance or I've done some finance, some health and wellness, uh, but most of it is you know business opportunity mm -hmm. and. Uh, that kind of thing. Um, so that's just what I did. Uh, there was no special let me – I mean I think I probably did a few like critiques and then sent it to them and said this is something I see uh, that could easily be rectified in your site or in your launch or in your you know email follow-up sequence or whatever. Um, if you'd like to talk, let's talk. So I think things like that work really well as far as demonstrating that you can help them. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like Frank, like Frank Kern says, demonstrate you can help them by actually helping them, you know, um, right. not in like a, hey, you suck and I'm better than you and like, I want your money, you should hire me, but more just like in a, hey, the, you know, we, I always like to educate people as I do it. Like, look, this is the reason that I'm telling you this. This is the reason that we're recommending you do this, uh, sort of like a prescription, you know, like, okay, if you're overweight, here's three things you can do to lose weight now. Mm -hmm. That works for marketing campaign structures, like the structure of the offer. How is it believable? Is it presented in a way that uh, increases desire and lowers doubt and skepticism? Um, and so I just kind of kept doing that. Uh, but even after 10, 12 years of doing it, I really find that there's there's still mistakes that I make, or still things that that I that I can tighten up in. You know, like. Even especially with my own writing for my own projects, my own brand or whatever, uh, it's like okay, read the copy out loud before you before you put it up there. You know, things like that. A that simple, would, simple that makes a huge difference. Oh man, reading it out loud. I mean, I was talking to Bond Halbert the other day. He's like, "Dude, did you read this out loud?" I'm like, uh, <laughs> "No, you know, no." And um, and it really makes a huge difference because not just reading it in your head, but read it out loud. Um, you know, like the foolproof guide to whatever, you know, to the foolproof guide to losing seven to 10 inches in 10 days or less, yeah. you know, which is basically impossible, but you know, <laughs> read things out loud. How do they sound? Does it yeah. make sense? Is it believable? Uh, and you'll find that when you read the letter out loud, like print it out, read it out loud, uh, you will find so many, not just grammar and spelling mistakes, but you will find so much flow weirdness. Like, well, this sentence doesn't connect with this sentence at all. It just seems like the offer is just right. thrown up on the page. Like this doesn't connect to the other idea, and that's the main thing that I see with most people's copy is 
one sentence or one paragraph doesn't connect to the other one idea. It's like, hey, I'm Lawton Childs. Would you like to buy like ten thousand dollars worth worth of pers- high level persuasion services from me? It's like, what? You know, so having a natural chain of, hey, nice to meet you. This is who I am. Like, oh, what do you do? And then eventually asking for the, you know, for the sale, not yeah. just, you know. So if yeah. it's warm, if it's warm traffic or people that know you, that's one thing. Uh, but so there's little things that even I go back and I'm like, okay, yes, this needs to have a logical, you know, if gold is going up and Obama's doing this, then that means this is going to happen. And if that means this is going to happen, here's why I'm the best person to tell you about these stocks and gold reserves. And these are the results that I've gotten. I'd like to help you get them too. Uh, so everything that you write has to come to that logical chain of where you're getting someone to be like, okay, I agree with that. Oh, I agree with that. Oh, that makes sense to me. It can't just have this illogical, random hopscotch thing to the sales page. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that, Lawton. You know, that's a little hard to teach. It's a little hard, to, but you'll figure it out. I mean, once once you not make sales, you know, <laughs> you can kind of go in and see. Oh well, there wasn't a natural progression from the headline to the next sentence or to the main idea to the offer to the testimonials. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's a, it's like a building a house. There's a logical step by step process you have to go through to get someone to choose your product or service over someone else's, uh, and uh, it takes time and it takes work. So where so go through the step by step for a second, um, and I want to hear some of your other go to rules because that is so simple but it's very profound. Read it out loud. What are go through some of the step by step of what you're talking about, but I also want to hear some of your go-to rules when you're writing copy that you make sure you hit on before it kind of goes out the door? Um, yeah, definitely like the main elements like, okay, well actually, you know, everyone says put a headline in there, but then the, the most successful sales letters of all time really did not have headlines. Uh, you had the, the famous Wall Street Journal ad, the story of two, you know, men, these two men were just alike, you know, uh, they went to the same schools, they, you know, they both graduated at the same time. They they worked in the same company, but one was the president and the other one was uh, a manager in a small department inside the company. What made the difference? Well, knowledge made the difference. There was no headline that did about a billion to two billion dollars in revenue for the Wall Street Journal, sending that the story of two men letter out and how one man had the Wall Street Journal and the other one didn't. That was in you know applied like supposed. Uh, mm-hmm. So. That did not have a headline. It just had a logo, yeah. the Wall Street Journal, uh, but it was directed at the right audience. So, uh, and then the Gary Halbert letter with the coat of arms letter, uh, no headline, also. Um, but also, it was it was designed to be a personal letter from one person to another. You don't need a headline. Um, so, I think getting their att- right. They always say attention, interest, desire, and action. That mm-hmm. that's. What most people fall back on, which yeah. makes sense. It's a little confusing, uh, but basically it's this. Like, get their attention. Promise something, whether it's a major benefit to reading the rest of this sales letter um, or a newsworthy recent item that dictates they should read this right now. So if it's a stock thing, like what's Obama doing that makes it imperative that they read this right now or they could lose their shirt in the next, uh, you know, Wall Street dump of 2015. Um, you know, if it's if it's a warning, so it could be like a straight benefit, like how to do X, Y, Z in X, Y, Z time. Um, the more specific, the better. Like, okay, if I said, hey, you know, Jeremy, you know, here's how to do amazing uh, podcast interviews and make $100,000 with your podcast in record time. Attaching a time limit to that or a number will automatically almost increase the readership because specifics are tangible. We can understand seven days versus seven months. Mm-hmm. Uh, so things like that. I mean, there, there is a natural progression. The John Carlton formula, which was also... Uh, I think uh, not Ross or Reeves, but oh gosh, I forget exactly who said it. But basically, you know, here's here's what I have, here's what it'll do for you, and here's how to get it right. So here's what I've got. It's like that could be the headline, you know, like the ultimate guide to real estate in New Jersey 
for people that don't want to spend their own money investing uh, in new properties, right? So that's the headline. And it's like, dear friend, if you've been burned in the real estate market before in North, South, or Middle New Jersey and think that you can't get ahead because the banks have one up on you and they won't loan you any money, then this will be the most profitable letter you read all year. Here's why, right? So there's that if then, you know, mm -hmm. if you've been trying to lose weight but feel like everyone else can and you can't, then this is then this proposal is for you. Mm -hmm. You know, my name is so and so, and tell them why you're writing or who you are. For the last ten years, I've been, you know, in the weight loss field and have tons of success stories. But that's, but more on that later. Here's why I'm writing to you today. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you tell them why you're writing, and you say, da da da, and then and then you say, here's what I've got for you. You know, if you're experiencing the following symptoms. Uh, this program might be for you. It contains X, Y, Z. It will do X, Y, Z for you or your money back. You know, so that's like the here's what I've got. Here's what it'll do for you. And then here's how to get it. You know, if you're interested in this in in this exclusive offer, here's what to do next. And you actually ask them for the money, uh, or you ask them to send in for the nonprofit, or you ask them to send in for the coupon. Um, so that's it. And then a roadmap. Like here's what I've got. Mm -hmm. Here's what it'll do for you. And here's how to get it, or mm -hmm. here's what's next. Um, so, the three elements of a successful promotion. Um, I like that. It's simple. So have, it's effective. Yeah. You also have things like headline. You know, so like headline. Debt You're a up. master at headlines because you have a, several courses out there on some like seven. And you do a good, great job. I always see you know tricks. Uh, the best head, headline in seven minutes in, increase yeah, by fifty percent. You know. Yeah, we have one called Simple Subject Line Secrets, which yes. is uh, how to get 52% open rates or higher in yeah. seven minutes or less. Yes. And uh, we show you how to go out to all these, the places where the best writers in the world are constantly writing for people like AOL or National Enquirer. Mm -hmm. And we teach how to model those headline templates for your own emails mm -hmm. uh, or Facebook ads or, you know, sales letters. Um, and, uh, you know, so that stuff is is always fun because usually there's something in the news or something like on Dig or Reddit or whatever that you can take and plug in your own subject, like what never to eat on an airplane, you know. So it's like what never to say on your next podcast. Like, oh, okay, what do I not say? <laughs> like, or the worst thing you could ever say to a podcast guest, never ever say these <laughs> seven, right? Right, like, yeah. Hey, oh, what is he saying? You know, and so I've probably already said them in this interview, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that curiosity. I mean, Gary Halbert said, I think said it best. It's like self interest is a great desire for people that read. Why? Why should they read your copy? Why should they read your offer? Well, self desire or self interest, but even higher than that is curiosity. Mm -hmm. It's like know what the three things to never eat in a supermarket are. You know, mm -hmm. I want to. Oh, which color shirt never to wear on a first date, you know? Right, yes. Those things, that's what we do. You know, like we wrap, we take really boring things and wrap them in, you know, very exciting packages uh, yeah. and ho hopefully ramp the curiosity up. So. Yeah. No, I love it a lot. And, and you know, I want to get into your story, how you got started, but I need to stick with this for a little bit because I'm, I'm so intrigued. Um, I want to go back to some of the people that you wrote for and, and some of your favorite um, copy that you wrote for them. But what are some of your other go-to rules before it goes out the door? Like you were saying, read it out loud. What are some other things that you – like the, that checklist that you make sure to do before it goes out? I mean I've definitely got to give you know Bond credit for – the whole read it out loud. I, I help him with his comma. You know, he, I'm like, he's like reading to me. I'm like, okay, put a comma in there, comma. You know, <laughs> like, Bond, you can sell that as a WSO, dude. Um, how to make your copy instantly more persuasive, you know, with one keystroke. You know? Right. So, um, so, yeah, read it out loud. That's definitely one of my, you know, things that I, um, you could also do like a that hunt. Like, okay, once your copy is done, look for words like pronouns or things that you don't even have to be in the letter. So usually like the word that, you can usually take that out. Mm -hmm. um, Bond also, you know, he was like, do a that hunt, do a uh, – one is like you should talk about them two or three times as much as you talk about yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so use the uh, search function in your word processor and type in the word I 
and then you know like look at that and then type in the word you and if you see I or we or us all the time and hardly any use or your or you can mm -hmm. then rewrite the letter so it's mostly about them and hardly about you at all yeah uh, you know because no one cares about us and yeah you have to like here's who I am this is why you should trust me section uh, but most of the time you want it to be you, you, your, you can, you will, you might, you know, the, that, unless, you know, especially if you have their first name, it's like that stuff should be peppered throughout the copy mm -hmm. um, because they're going to keep reading it. And that's like Joe Sugarman said, getting them down the slippery slide to the, to the order button. Mm -hmm. And the more you talk about them, the more they're going to read the letter. Yeah. The more they read the letter, the more chances there are that they'll buy mm -hmm. your stuff. Yeah. So that's definitely one, uh, you know, read it out loud, uh, do a pronoun hunt, uh, you know, instead of saying like this or it will do X, Y, Z for you, say this business boosting course or this new insider method or, mm -hmm. you know, really have those descriptive adjectives in there instead of like it will or yeah. this will or you will learn, you know, so use those descriptive phrases uh, don't waste that on like a it will or it can say what is it what you know describe it yeah uh, you know um, in as many I use a, a, a thesaurus and go in and if I'm writing something about money I might say money twice but then I'll go in and I'll put in cash I'll put in moolah I'll put in greenbacks I'll put in right. anything to make it more spicy you know yeah um, and Never use a 10 cent word when a 5 cent word will do. Uh, so if you say something like the results that we've accomplished over the last five years, the results that we've gotten or that we've got or that we've achieved, you know, like have your writing be as much to a third to fifth grader as you can. You mm -hmm. know? Um, never use like a three hyphen word or even a two hyphen, you know, it's like really make it simple. So if you said like, you know, We've demonstrated that the zero six five thousand will go three hundred miles an hour. It's like we've shown you, or you've just seen. Uh, so, really make it dumbed down. Uh, you know, you're not trying to win any literary literary awards here. You're trying to sell products and services. So, mm -hmm. unless it's still like a Fortune five hundred company or Warren Buffett's secretary, you probably do not need you know ten dollar words in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that's one thing that I try to look out for is, is it above the client's or customer's head? Uh, is this in the language that they use? Um, just very simple things that you kind of pick up along the way. Uh, you know, are you, are you putting things into like nine or ten chunk paragraph lines? So is there like, is it like on Facebook where there's no line breaks and it's just like a ten line right. paragraph that no one's going to read. Right. So I love to chunk up my copy with subheads mm -hmm. and sub headlines mm -hmm. and use ellipses and commas to really keep them reading. Uh, so I use short paragraphs. I use short words. I use a when I use three long sentences, I do one short sentence. I mean, anything to kind of keep them moving down the page. You know. Yeah. One copywriter told me, Jeremy, you could never use too many ellipses. That was their advice to me. Yeah, it's it, it definitely becomes something I use more of, uh, yeah. especially like on the end of a bullet point. Like I'll use ellipses to tie in one bullet point to another one, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'll be like, you know, what never to eat on an airplane, dot, 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 the next bullet point. And then I'll have a dot, dot, dot in front of that bullet and then have the next bullet. Mm. So Got it's it. like they're reading. It they're leads reading. right into it, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I guess you could never use it enough. I mean, hyphens, bullets, you know, really short sentences like, you know, the car ran really, you know, the the cat ran to the door and then went outside, period. That's why, you know, so it's like very short sentences, um, bolding, you know, at different times, underlining, uh, not like to where it looks like some English teacher, you know, hacked it up with a red pen, but, you know, Keep them engaged. Mm -hmm. Pick the top three things in your sales letter that aren't highlighted and go in and highlight them. And, yeah. you know. and now it's different for running text than it is for video, but not very much. So, Lon, so. tell us about some of the – I like those. So read it out loud, that hunt, You know, search for the I in you, and then the, it, the, if you have this or it, make it more descriptive. Tell us some of the 
um, the people that you worked with and some of your favorite sales messages that you constructed. So you mentioned Perry Belcher, Frank Kern, Jordan Belfort, Sean Malark, and Michelle. What are the top two that you remember that you could run us through and, and why it worked? I think definitely Frank's and most of these guys, you know, you'd be lucky if you get any of the clients to test anything or track anything. Um, but as long as their sales were up, you know, they were they were happy with, with what I did and, and it was in the voice that they wanted. I think that was the hardest part with some of these with, with some of the clients that I've worked with is getting the voice right. Yeah. You know? How do some you do people, that? Yeah, some people really care about that and other people don't. And uh, so sometimes you do three or four drafts and some like I, I've had maybe two clients that are like, hey, the voice isn't right. We're going to try something else, you know, um, and I think they were just really particular with what they wanted or how they wanted it, especially in the time frame that they wanted it. Some people want stuff in like 24 hours and they want it to be exactly what they want, but they're not really telling you what they want. And so it's sort of like, huh. well, dude, I can't help you if you don't tell me exactly what you want, you know. Uh, so some of it's vagueness where it's like you're trying to read the client's mind and the crystal ball and you know that like nothing you do is going to make them happy. Uh, you definitely have things like that where it's best to just say bye-bye to the client. Um, but uh, also you're just going to want to study as many past promotions or emails that they've mm. done. Yeah. Um, obviously someone that has a real uh, interesting voice like a Frank Kern or a Carlton um, – you can emulate pretty easily because it's so descriptive and how they write. Uh, other people like, you know, if it's like a, if it's like a, uh, a health and wellness person or a personal development person, it might be a little harder, uh, you know, unless they have a very particular style, um, you know, like a certain actor would, where you go in and you mimic this actor and people know who it is, like De Niro, you yeah. know, or somebody like that. So. I think if, if the person's not really known or doesn't have a, a style that stands out, it's much harder to write in their voice if they don't really have a voice. Um, so I'm not really called on too much to do that. Usually I write in a hopefully uh, vanilla enough style that it can be applied to uh, pretty much anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't really have too much advice on like, how to write. What's your most memorable for, that you've uh, written for one of those people? One of the most memorable, of course, was uh, – uh, the stuff I did for for Ryan Dice and Perry Belcher, and the stuff that I'm sort of still doing, I did a lot of like Twitter. They had like a Twitter and Facebook product that I did. Um, one of the ones that was most memorable was ones that wasn't even in the internet marketing. It was in like the real estate. Uh, we were selling like boat slips and condos, mm. and uh, we went to the bank to get this money. And the headline was, um, you know, most people think the chief joy of fishing is being out on the water. That's not true. The chief joy of fishing is catching a bigger fish than the guy next to you. You know, uh, so that was in like the headline and the subhead, which I got from a fishing magazine. Uh, I, I didn't know anything about fishing really. I, I grew up fishing, but I'm not a fisher fisherman. You know, so they wanted me to write this sales letter on like selling this marina property with boat slips and condos. So I went and got all these fishing magazines at Barnes and Noble, and I looked at the letters to the editor. Like these are people that are really passionate writing about fishing and stuff. And the guy said that there was one, the chief joy of fishing. So that's what he said. Like it's it's catching a bigger fish than the guy next to you. And I was like, this is going to go, if not in the headline, then in the subhead or you know whatever. And so the bank manager was like, this is the best sales letter I've ever read. The you bank know? manager said that. Uh, yeah, this was some guy at a bank. You know, so. That's something I'll never forget, uh, and I wasn't even there. But you know, my dad comes home. He's like, "Yeah, they really liked it, or whatever." So I was like, "Would you get the money?" You know, so uh, <laughs> and and things like that, like little things I did early on, like writing it for eBay. We had this hotel in Tallahassee, Florida, uh, where we had all this high end bed spreads, like Ralph Lauren, and and my mom was like, "We need to get rid of these because we're getting some new ones. If you write the copy or if you sell them, I'll give you the money." You know. I was like, oh, okay. And so I wrote them and they all sold out. And I was like, oh, the more you learn how to write or persuade, the more stuff that you sell. So things like that. I think things that were like my first wins where I could kind of tell, did it do good or not? Mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and the things I did with Bond Halbert, the simple subject line secrets, I mean, and the results that people have gotten from that for doubling or, or, or use, I think even tripling or sometimes quadrupling their open rates. Um, for their emails, 
Uh, as far as like big wins from clients, a lot of them just didn't either. They didn't have the numbers, or uh, you know, they. It's very hard to get that. You have to go money. back to them if it's not your own, and and ask. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. ask you know, Scott and Brian Moran, we did that Facebook launch together like three months ago and I wrote all the emails and I'm like, do you know how much money that from the emails that got brought in? And he's like, I can go back and look, it's going to take a while, you know? So, yeah. it, uh, so unless someone's like really, really, really cares about that, you're just not going to ever get yeah. it back. They just know it did well. They don't, yeah. yeah. Or like results or conversions. I'm like, well, I can't tell you that, you know, um, go back and, to the letter with the boat slips. So tell me how that all tied in. I want to hear more about that letter. When you, well, I think I mean, it's a the, really interesting technique to go and read the letters to the editor. I love that. Yeah, and I and I forgot about that, but it was one of the most. It was like that thing that obvious Adams book that uh, Gary Benzavenga I think had of like the story about the guy who tried to be a copywriter and people were like, "No, you're not that talented," but. He would find solutions in the business that were just obvious. Like, okay, it's obvious to add in an upsell here, and people started calling him Obvious Adams, and it was obvious. Like, okay, I know nothing about this market. Let me go read Amazon reviews of right. the top ten books, or let me go read letters to the editor uh, of what these people care about. Um, and lucky enough, in that market, like the fishing boat, you know, Florida coast. You know, there's even like a Coastal Living magazine. There's so many magazines about that lifestyle that you can go in and get the data. Now, you can just go to Amazon, type in the uh, subject, and have really a slew of like, I mean, this data would have cost hundreds of thousands yeah. like yeah. 20 years ago to get of yeah. people saying, this is what I like, this is what I don't like, yeah. you know, I wish someone would come up with this. So if you see 10 or 15 of those, you kind of know, okay, people yeah. are buying uh, this because X, Y, Z. Um, and so I think that's one of the things in the industry that's really not taught is the research part. And that's sort of something that I still kind of struggle with to this day is, you know, what's already out there? What's already doing well? Um, yeah. There are tools now like AdBeat and, uh, oh gosh, what else? Um, you know, like kind of kind of market spying tools you yeah. can get. What runs where market. is another one. Yeah, like yeah. uh which would you say? What runs where is another one. Yeah, what runs where, which is like three hundred dollars a month or something. So it's it's not cheap, but basically um you know I was doing something for uh, one of my one of these like thirty, forty million dollar companies and they're like, oh yeah, we have accounts for like ad beat and what runs where. I'm like, what the crap? Like <laughs> You know, it's like because I would go in there and be like, "All right, we have a client. We need this copy like for this squeeze page and stuff." And I would sort of use my knowledge and what because it would be tons of different industries, right? And I would be like, "Okay, I sort of get it, but if you tell me that this real estate ad has been running for you know seven hundred days and it's making money, well, we're going to model that, you know." Right. So with ad beat and what runs where, if the market is big enough you can kind of get a, a, a head start on mm -hmm. what to model. Um, and so I think that's very important, but those tools are expensive. Yeah. So I wanted to get, highlight that because the, that what you said, you know, the Amazon reviews and letters to the editor types is golden. I mean, I would, yeah. I wouldn't have thought of letters to the editor. What's it? Yeah. And I, and I, and I guess now it's, it's harder to do it. You could get to like Barnes and Noble, I guess. And, uh, you could also go to like the websites themselves, like vanityfair.com and yeah. try to get, the letters to the editor. Um, I'm sure they're online. But even just like looking at like magazine, you know, like for tripwires, what we call tripwires or lead lead magnets, if you're trying to get someone to opt in for a free report, you can go to like Inc. Magazine and click on the images and Google images and get all the magazine covers, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that works really well if you're stuck for ideas. Like put in your, okay, Cosmopolitan, then you get tons of copy ideas. Okay, Men's Health. Runner's World, Inc., Fast Company, Vanity Fair, uh, National Enquirer, Entrepreneur Magazine. I mean, vi you know, Vegan Today, whatever. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's you read if, that, yeah. If, if it's a if it's a, a a national desire or ailment, there is a magazine for it, right? Uh, and so I use that. Um, I'll go into like books on Amazon and I'll look at the table of contents and see. What are people? What are what are they selling? You know, like if let's say it has three hundred reviews, well, I know it's something I should pay attention to. Mm -hmm. You know, like over a hundred reviews, I know that it's a solid piece of research that I can go in 
look at the reviews of the book, see if there's a trend in the first 10 or so of things they like or didn't like, mm -hmm. um, or like, I, I am glad because I got XYZ out of it, you know? Yeah. And you're like, okay, whatever they want, that's a benefit I can put in my letter, um, you know, and, and then go forward from there. Look at the table of contents, uh, look at the, you know, blurbs on the back. I mean, and look at the top five or 10 books in the market. I mean, these people spend so much money on copy for these books. It's, it's insane. Yeah. So well, I want to get into your story, how you got started, but I always like to include a fun fact. And besides being a blues guitar enthusiast, you've played the guitar for some interesting people. Yeah, um, that's a funny story. Uh, I actually have the photo right here, and I didn't even think that I would. Uh, this is... Um, Hold it up closer a little bit. I can't. Can you see it? Okay. That's you? That's me. I was 16, uh, and um, that is President Clinton and Hillary Clinton. Wow. Let me see if I can get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's so. wild. Uh, my granddad was in uh, Florida politics for a long time, and he was governor of Florida, and he was good friends with Clinton because Clinton was governor of Arkansas um, and then president, and they were both Democrats. And uh, so when my granddad passed away, they were like, would you write a song? I was like, yeah. And then Clinton came to the memorial service oh, wow. in Washington. So it was scary. I mean, it was like, okay, you're going to go play for the president. Um, but I was like, it was a big confidence booster because I was like, I've done something you haven't done, you know. And so it was kind of funny, you know. Uh, I mean, I don't go around like telling many people about it, but when it first happened, it was it was fun. And uh, that's I was, amazing. Like, take, that, take that, Springsteen, you know. So. So what was the song? Uh, it was a song I wrote by my granddad. Uh, he walked across the state of Florida uh, in 1970 for this uh, U.S. Senate campaign, and like nobody knew who he was, and he was running against this big incumbent. And uh, and he just walked the state like for four months. Wow! Uh, it didn't really have any money for TV, um, and so uh, was able to to win by a good margin uh, and kind of continued that whole populist mindset throughout his career in the U.S. Senate and then governor of Florida for two terms. Um, so uh, yeah, so some of that stuff I guess rubbed up on me as far as like communicating and telling stories and. Yeah. Uh, what were you the know, big it, lessons you learned from your grandfather? Um, I think really the fact of how much he, he tried to help other people, whether it was children of Florida, uh, a lot of legislation based on anti-smoking, um, you know, anti, you know, like a lot of for, our ch for the children uh, and for seniors. Um, he was the first governor to sue the tobacco companies to recoup some Medicaid and Medicare really? costs. Wow. And got like a seventeen billion dollar settlement for the state, Whoa. Um, and then all, all these other governors started to do it. Um, so, I mean, I think he cared about people, and it wasn't mm -hmm. about like Democrat Republican so much as what's the right decision for the most people. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he, he compromised on different issues, and now in Washington, they can't compromise on anything. So, um, so that, I think that's what I learned is like meet people in the middle, you know. Um, Obviously, it's very, very divisive now, um, and uh, so that's kind of sad to see. But, I mean, I think he, he persevered. He didn't give up. Same with my dad. I mean, if, if you have a goal, just kind of keep doing it. Don't take no for an answer, um, or at least, like, ask questions people don't ask. Like, hey, can I work for you, Mr. Frank Kern? <laughs> you know, so I think, uh, I think I asked him about five times, and he finally said, fine, you know. Like, uh, and... Um, now we just make fun of each other. Like, you know, I'll text him and be like, you can't read. And he's like, you can't see. So, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I think he's actually, he told me he was feeling sick or he's got some kind of stomach thing. It's kind of funny. But, um, uh, yeah, so that was some of the lessons I learned is yeah. never stop, never stop trying to get better at this. I mean, every day I kind of get on the phone with somebody or I talk to somebody and they're, achieving so much more with their products or they're doing something they're they're earning big money or they're 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 making waves they're they're doing something exciting uh and i think that inspires me not mm -hmm. just like what they're earning i think but the fact that they did something and it's working you know i'm like it's sort of like the flux capacitor you know like 
you hit it, it doesn't work, you hit it, it doesn't work, and then you, you hit your head on the toilet and you, you, suddenly you know about time travel and, you know, and you're going back to time. <laughs> I, I think that, that's, that's like persuasion. It's like, yes, it will fail. You have to keep going and right. keep tweaking it. And uh, it's like people expect, oh, you wrote this sales letter, so the sales are going to come in. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. You know, like, you know, you, you have to keep you have to have a great relationship with your audience. You have to have something that they desire. Uh, you know, because it's like if you hate cheeseburgers, I'm not going to write a sales letter to convince you to love cheeseburgers. I did. Is, I did happens. read that you're a cheeseburger reviewer somewhere. I am a cheeseburger reviewer for hire. For hire. Yeah. So, <laughs> for yeah, hire. I missed that. Yeah. <laughs> My Twitter bio. Really. I gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get a drink of water. Real quick. Go ahead. Um. All right, Lon. So. Tell me, you were saying about, um, I want to get into, so your, your, your grandfather and your dad were big influences. What were the early parts of your career? What did you do early on? Really, I, I mean, like anything that, I'm, that you're passionate about and you want to get good at, you have to ask tons of questions. I mean, I asked so many questions. People like Bon Halbert, Ross Bowring. Um, Kevin Rogers, um, Dan Kennedy, John Carlton. I'm always on an insatiable quest for knowledge mm -hmm. and specific knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, how do you write the headline? What's the best way to do it? Is there a best way? Mm -hmm. Like, not. But um, you know, is there a, a, a perfect way to write? an email that so it can make the most money possible. Um, how do you come up with a webinar that, that is successful if you've never done one? Um, you know, how do you run auto webinars? You know what? So as far as the marketing components, I'm always curious about that. Mm -hmm. uh, especially when I see people like, yeah, I do 20 grand a month in webinars. I'm like, what the heck? You know, so, so or I do 50 or 100 grand. You're like, what am I doing? What, you know, so, um, or like, hey, we've done this and it worked. So I think, Seeing things work, I'll never get tired of that. Um, having people take their ideas and put it out there and having it make money or having it be a big sensation or having people comment on what they're doing is the hardest currency to have because it's the social currency, right? You're, you're putting your ideas out there and it's affecting someone else, mm -hmm. um, whether that's getting a sale or resonating with someone or having your book be a big hit or, you know, I mean, I think that stuff is we're we're attracted to people that do big things like music artists or uh booksellers or marketers or you know like oh so and so went to space i mean that that's we're attracted to people that uh, try to do things bigger uh than who they are or what or what they are or their talents mm -hmm. naturally justify them being able to do mm -hmm. um like a tiger woods or you know, like I'm not saying I'm anything like Tiger Woods, but it's like be able to be that good or that successful um, at like putting your shoulder to something and have it work out. I mean, I, you know, and then if it didn't work out, like figuring out what can I do that will work out, and and uh, that always inspires me. Or people that have have lessons I've learned from people that have met insurmountable odds and yeah. challenges. Yeah. You know, presidents or musicians or uh and really it's about the stories i mean yeah i, I read a lot of like rock and roll biographies john mm -hmm. lennon springsteen bob dylan and the stories of what they wanted to do and how that came apart about like okay i, I wanted to write great songs so first i oh i learned to tune my guitar and then i learned to maybe play some chords and then and then that those little steps added up to this big career or something mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. maybe an obscure career but as long as i like the music i don't really care you know? so um so i think things like that that uh that helped me along the way like getting dan kennedy's newsletter reading about salesmanship in print reading mm -hmm. about marketing offers uh cory rudel getting his sales material and reading all that clayton make peace and uh bob bly and Reading those books, Joe Sugarman probably had, you know, the the Ad Week Copywriter's Handbook. Learning my how yeah. what did a good ad look like, and how did he construct it, and 
it was small. I mean, it was like seventy, eighty dollar uh, order value, but it was the copy wasn't very long. It was like a page, um, but it had these subheads and these headlines, and it showed you how to break up the copy to where it make it more readable, and it showed you how to increase the desire and address the skepticism or doubt. Mm-hmm. And so there is a formula like for that, I think, if you will, of look, you have to do these eight things. As long as there's enough flour and sugar and water and eggs, you can make a, a, a pie and it should be pretty good. Right. You know? And you know that's what we do uh, with our letters or our emails or uh, one-on-one. Um, and, uh, and so I think I'm always learning about that. I mean, I, I mean, Ben Settle, I'm on his $100 a month newsletter, and I think that's that's you know, pretty good information. Uh, Ryan Levesque, I pay to be in his monthly Facebook group Mm -hmm. where I can send stuff out and get feedback on it um, or ask a question and get an immediate answer. Mm -hmm. Uh, Colin Ontario's Cult of Copy group on Facebook, which is free, uh, where you can go in and and ask advice and not be embarrassed. And, uh, you know, so I think asking questions. Never be afraid to ask how to do something, even if it's, like, embarrassing, like, well, what makes a good sales letter or how do I start it out or how do I convince people that I'm the right person for the job? Well, usually it's specifics like who have you worked for? What have you, you know, what are your results? What do other people say about you? If you don't have anything like that, do some work for free so you can get some of that, you know. Uh, I mean, I did that. You know, yeah. I did, I probably did a couple of spec jobs and I was like, well, at least going to be 500 bucks, you know. So, right. uh, and then it was 2000 and then it was, Three thousand, and then it was five thousand, and now it's twelve thousand eight hundred. You know, now so, not people are going to fork over that money, but you know, you find the right person. Right. So, Lon, what's some of the best advice you've gotten from some of your mentors uh, directly? I think it's about the specifics of the copy, um, and really about like, does one idea flow very well? Like, I think that's why that Joe Sugarman book is really good for people to read. Yeah. The Ad Week Copywriter's Handbook because it talks about the grease slide that your copy needs to take them on from like the goal of the headline is to get them to read the first sentence. Okay, I can do that. You know, so taking some of that pressure right. off myself, right, and not feeling like I have to write the best copy in the world, but that I need to write something that's readable and that makes sense and that is very specific to what my market wants to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and then also like the credibility like one of the things that we see working with the people that I do is lack of specifics you know lack of credibility they're like well I've trained at all the martial arts schools in the world and I've worked with the top two martial arts people and I'm like well who are those people and where did you train like are there photos are there specific names of the buildings do you have photos of awards you've won or is there a name of the award you can put here that Mm -hmm. would resonate with people that are reading this or do they just not care you know uh so things like that. Be very specific. Will this work in ninety days? Will this work in, you know, thirty minutes? Will it? Does it only take seven unique steps? You know, what are the specifics? Does it only work in Florida? You know, um, is it a loophole that the IRS and the FDA both want banned? But right now you can get in on it. Like, what are the specifics? Mm-hmm. If you're doing a health or wellness or financial piece. You know, it's like what I like to do is I like to go out into um, getting that credibility and I like to type in like my topic into Google News and I look for news stories that collaborate my claims and back up my point of view. Mm -hmm. Like, don't take my word for it. The New York Times just said this about stem cell research and Mm -hmm. CNN said this and, you know, uh, the Wall Street Journal and the council of the president's council on fitness said this. And so then I have like three or four paragraphs that are backing up the fact that this is a big trend or that mm-hmm. this is by science. So things like that. If you don't have that credibility, or even if you do, even if I'm, let's say, Donald Trump and I'm writing to you about how to succeed in real estate, who else can I say supports my claims? Right. Is it a newspaper? Is it a medical journal? Is it a you know a non-biased study of rats and gerbils? And, you know, like, whatever. So right. things like that. To support my claims, yeah. lowering the doubt, lowering the doubt, lowering the doubt, lowering the doubt. You know, increasing the desire. You know, um, that will never get old. Uh, you know, I mean, if you just had like ten bullet points of people that supported your claims, 
and then said, "Hey, this thing's awesome. You should buy it." You probably would sell some stuff, yeah. you know. So, so Lon, what's some of the biggest mistakes people make with their copy? I know that we were talking in the beginning, and you were saying you have more stuff come across your desk than probably most people because of what you're looking at with the the digital marketer. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, the first one is lack of specifics. So, like, what I mean is, like, you know, here's how to lose weight. You know, so it's like, well, how much weight are you going to lose? Like, is it is it a certain amount of inches in a certain amount of time? If you can't quantify that legally or ethically or whatever, um, you could say, like, for people in, like, these three states or you could say, uh, like, how much or how little. So, like, numbers, like, you know, quantifying it with time, quantifying it with specifics like oh i made seventy thousand dollars last month well was it seventy thousand dollars or was it like sixty eight thousand two hundred and thirty one dollars and nineteen cents right you know anything to make your claims more tangible so they can picture it in their mind right you know um if that makes sense so numbers letters places you know specific people anything to make what you're saying more specific uh, and more tangible, more and 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 the reason we want it to be as specific as possible because specifics equal belief, vagueness equals just skepticism. Uh, so that's one. Uh, another one is just readability, where like they'll have seven or eight paragraphs like all stuck together, and there won't be any kind of subheads to break up the copy, or there there will just be a bunch of like long sentences um, and uh, a bunch of runoff to where it's like. We use the John Carlton's gun to the head test where it's like, if I had a gun to your head right now, would you keep these three paragraphs in here or could you get rid of them mm-hmm. and still make the sale? So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll say, hey, you probably don't need this extra page about your company's history. You can probably do away with that and your sales will be fine um, because people don't care. It's like what, what, what you should do is use like the who cares test or the so what test um, where it's like imagine read the first five paragraphs of the copy. And then imagine your prospect sitting across from you saying, who cares? And really get into the specifics and benefits. Like, oh, you know, Jeremy, you can succeed at podcasting in 2015. Who cares? You know, like, that's not specific enough. That's not going to grab my my curiosity radar and, like, zoom it up to level 10. You know, mm-hmm. I, it's like, here's three hidden underground methods to easily get to the top of the iTunes charts in any podcast category, you know. And this works even this works even if you insert big objection, insert big objection, you know. Like don't have money or whatever, whatever it is. So right. things like that, very specific. Mm-hmm. It, it's an offer that they would probably want. Um, you know, it's it's a uh, you know, it, it it's written in a way that increases the desire and lowers the risk. Um, it impl- the headline and the the debt copy underneath the headline implies that this is something that they would need to read now, or this is something that would immediately benefit them now, mm-hmm. uh, or it's something that would be very easy for them to do, even if they've already tried everything else. You know, mm-hmm. how is this different? How is this new? How is this faster? You know, it's like so things like that of asking yourself: Is this believable? Um, are you making claims you can't back up? Uh, so believability, specificity, um, readability. You know, like is it chunked? Is it you know? Can you do a three-line paragraph versus a five-line? Can you do a two-line paragraph versus an eight-line? You know, so it's like if it's intimidating to read, it won't get read. Mm-hmm. That's why we chunk up the copy. That's why Joe Sugarman's book would be so good for people to get. Um, Bob Bly's books are pretty good, a little on the technical side. Uh, but you really you have to read a couple of these books to decide – who resonates with you? Is it Frank Kern? Is it Clayton Makepeace? Is it John Carlton? Is it the, you know Bond and Kevin Halbert? Is it Gary Halbert? You know, like who resonates with you that you like learning from? Right. Find one or two of those people and study everything that you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, write, write the letters out by hand. You know, um, read it out loud. I mean, there's just so many things you go on. Any other big mistakes you've seen? Because for people who don't know, tell them what, kind of what what you do with the. You know, why you get so much uh, mail across your desk for this? I mean, I think one of the things that I do is I'm the, the, the head person that sees all the uh, – we, 
we have a high end funnel program uh, where where clients come in and we build their their marketing funnels for them. So we make sure that their cheeseburger is the right offer for their audience, and then we make sure that their would you like fries with that upsell uh, is congruent with their first offer. We we construct those offers, and then we say, hey, these are the four or five sales letters or videos that you should go write. So, Mr. Client, go write these, and we will review all of them mm -hmm. and make sure that they are um, there are not any kind of logical points that are dropped off or uh, things that you say that might be confusing, like where you're using terms and your audience might not know it. Um, so we look at a different multiple things. We look at believability. We look at credibility. We look at readability. We look at really the main thing we're looking at is the offer positioned in a way to where you know you can go in and get them to part with a small amount of money and then a larger amount and then a larger amount, you know, two or three times. Um, so you have the main offer, that, or you have the 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 low ticket offer, then you have the the uh, main offer, and then you have like some kind of upsell. Um, and so that's why I see so much stuff come across my desk is I'm reviewing all of that stuff, emails, websites, sales letters, video sales letters, squeeze pages, and then I'm not also doing it just for them, I'm doing it for multiple private clients um, that have their own groups or uh, whatever. Um, so I mean that the main thing I would I would caution everybody against and it is like me too headlines, you know, like or me too claims. If your if your claims like how to get high prof how to get high net worth clients with webinars, you know that that's something we've seen a lot of last year is, you know, webinars or funnels or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, how to build a, a high ticket six figure funnel. If if your audience is seeing the exact same thing, why is what why should I keep reading? Like what's the benefit to me? So you really have to do your homework to come up with angles of approach that are, you know, like why webinars don't work in 2015. Oh, well, interesting. It's something I'm it's opposite of what I'm already hearing about, you know. Pick something that's contrary and pick something that is shocking or curiosity, you know. Uh, cuz otherwise it's like everyone's saying the same thing. You, know. you just blend in with the crowd. Oh, everybody does. But you're not thinking you are. You're thinking, well, I wrote it, and it deserves to be read. Mm -hmm. And like Dan Kennedy said, like you have to earn the readership. You know, mm -hmm. you can't just say, hey, how to, you know, how to quit your job and sell full time as an internet marketer. You, you know, you have to have something that is juicy. And how do you come up with that? Well, that's the hard part. You know, that's why. <laughs> right. You know. So. Yeah. So, Lon, what do you consider your most successful campaign and why it worked? And what do you consider your least successful campaign and why it did not work? Um, I, I don't really have data on either one. I, I think my favorite one that I've done was the, the simple subject line secrets that I did with Bond Halbert, uh, really because it was so tangible. I mean, how to, you know, how to triple your open rates in seven minutes or less. Well, I mean, we, and we kind of said, well, how long do you think it takes someone to learn this process? And I said, well, it takes them about seven minutes or less, you know, because it's not hard. Uh, you know, you find subject lines or you find headlines that worked in other industries and you model it uh, off of news stories and current events and things like that mm -hmm. and you show them how to do it. So I think that one was so tangible for people because it offered that specific result. You know, double or triple your open rates. And then in seven minutes, so you didn't have. It was that big idea of you didn't have to be a world class copywriter. You didn't have to, you know. There were, there weren't only like thirty guys that could do it. You know, like you could do it. You know, anybody could do it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and anyone should want to do it because who doesn't like more money or who doesn't like more open rates? So I think that was one of the ones I'm most proud of because it was so fun to work on and it's it's pretty inexpensive product and it, it gives people something they can immediately use that's tangible. Not like a vague concept that nobody can use. Uh, the stuff that was probably the least successful or the least thought out was things where clients came to me like a week or less before and said, "Hey, we need this like forty-eight page thing," you know. And so, you know, I, I mean, I think it's going to be good. It's going to be persuasive, but yeah, I'd rather have two months to do it. You know? mm -hmm. so, but hey, they're paying the bill, you know. So, um, what about Lawton? That um, since it's inspired insider, I want to ask. What's been your lowest moment and how you pushed forward through it? And then on the other end of it, what's been your proudest moment? I think my lowest moments are when I doubt my own abilities and doubt my, uh, not really my self-worth, uh, but more 
can I do this? You know, like even after the success that I've been able to have, um, there's still this thing of like, well, these three people could probably do this better, you know. So mm -hmm. it's like I'm stuck here doing it, you know, writing the copy or critiquing the marketing campaign or man, if I just knew more, if I just was smarter, I could tell them this brilliant piece of advice. But you know, I think you just have to not compare yourself to other people. That's one thing Facebook is horrible at. You know, we're constantly comparing our lives to other people's lives or, you know, whatever. It's like they're married, I'm not, or they have a yacht, I don't, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, and so I think that's very dangerous. While you don't want to not do a great job, you know, and I think you always want to be bet be improving yourself, you also just need to know that, like, look, if you want to achieve different goals in your life, you just have to work work hard at those goals. And mm -hmm. if you're talented in that area, people will tell you that and they yeah. will that that will come through and res and resonate. Um, you know, I think if I was a terrible persuasion uh, or, you know, in print or in w whatever, uh, I mean, I took that Strength Finder test, you know, this book called Strength Finder. Yeah, yeah. And back, you can take this test of like what your strengths are. And it said like one of your strengths is wooing, you know. Like wooing other wooing. people, like that's all I need, you know. <laughs> uh, and so look for little wins. I think yeah. look for look for little wins. That's what I always look for. If I'm not, you know, if if, if things are if things are frustrating with my clients, or you know, it's not exciting right now, or whatever, or I'm not, you know, I did this campaign and it did okay, but I I want to really resonate with people and do something big. It's not working out. Focus on the little wins, you know. Um, like what could happen today that you can be grateful for, and I think, uh, you know, um, that's definitely something that keeps me going. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely my relationship with God. Definitely my relationship with people in my church. Definitely, um, hopefully, getting the focus off myself and putting it on, on other people, um, which is a little hard to do in this in this business. Uh, but you know, uh, yeah, man, I appreciate you having having me on and taking the time to 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 ask me questions and hopefully it was uh, entertaining and fun. Yeah. What's been the proudest? Oh man, the proudest. Uh, I can't I leave you on the, the lowest. Uh, you know. I, I think just being able to get, being able to have the audacity that I can get up and do this every day and, and help people and, and, and hopefully hit some home runs. And I, I did an email template the other day called back to the future. And it was all about how, Hey, have you seen that movie back to the future? And, you know, if not, this is a synopsis of what it was. And it's like if I had, if I had, uh, I can't go back to the future, but if I could, this was the one product or service that I would make sure that you had. Mm -hmm. You can get it over here, right? And my friend did a, like thirty thousand dollars worth of products from mm -hmm. that email template. Like the idea of taking something from the past that resonates with your audience, mm -hmm. bringing it into the present. Um, and so little things like that, I love that. You know, uh, That's like weird. yeah, and so you know. It's like okay, I can do this. I can help people, and I think, um, uh, yeah. So I, I love that stuff. You know, I love the fact that I can get up every day and and have something that I can give to people that can really help them and that they can't do on their own. And you know, yeah. uh, so I think that's very important. To have. Yeah. Well, and I appreciate it. Where should we direct people towards? Where should they check out more from you? Um, you can go to LawtonChiles dot net. Uh, that's L A W T O N. C H I L E S uh, dot net. Um, I'm on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Facebook. You yeah. find me there. Um, there's stuff floating around the web. So, Lon, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions or anything um, or needs me to put in some resources in the comments, just let me know where you're going to post this and yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll chime in. If we had more so. time, I'd make you play the guitar, but. Uh, I appreciate it. I'll have to check out the YouTube. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, Lon. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.